welcome to the ghost show online, my fiends, booze, and ghouls. <laughs> Your hosts, Seeker Groves, Rachel Benton, and Ian Russell will discuss all things paranormal. Prepare to be afraid. 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 Hey everybody, welcome to the Go Show. And this week we got Rachel back. Yay! Hello, Yay! hello. <laughs> Still alive. I'm Sika, and we have Ian and of course our lovely co-host Rachel, who's been super oh, busy job. Uh, and so she's she's been a little bit busy. But today we decided, well, last week we decided <laughs> when Ian and I were doing the show that we would do a show about Donald Sutherland. And it seems like a strange subject maybe to some people out there because we are the ghost show. But Donald has done a lot of horror films over his career. And he happened to pass away on the day that we were recording the show the last time. So we thought it might be a good topic to discuss on this week's show. So, um, who who wants to who wants to kick off or say hi or say you got anything to say before we kick okay. off? Okay, yeah, um, um, I'll, I'll kick it off. Okay. So, yes, today's go show is a little different. Mm -hmm. That we are going to be discussing a wonderful, wonderful, iconic Canadian actor. Donald Sutherland, who passed away on June the 20th. Um, mm -hmm. Just, what was that from now, about a week and a half ago? Yeah, or, just very, not too long ago. And I, uh, I, as I mentioned last week to you, Ian, had worked with him a few times on films. Yes, that's really? right. Really? That's wow. Right. Yeah. He was just that's so uh, awesome. He was mesmerizing. He really was. Just, and, the classic one of the one of the classic Canadian actors, and um, okay, now obviously uh, myself being Canadian, you Sika, um, Rachel, I'm I'm going to ask you as as someone who came from England originally, and now you're living in um, upstate Western New York. Um, what is your what is your take on on Donald Sutherland? Because he is oh, obviously yes. a very well known actor. Oh um, yes, these days, um, uh, specifically with probably the Hunger Game movies. But uh, what's your what's your take on on Donald Sutherland, Rachel? I I feel that he was a very prominent uh, figure in Hollywood. You know. Um, on the on screen um i can't say i've worked with him <laughs> like you Sika, but um i feel that you know uh from an english point he was you know in england when i lived in england he was very well respected as an actor um you know and he's done such a wide variety of movies and media mm -hmm. um and that's uh, in a way that he's so versatile he was able to do it all and pull pull it off so well um yeah. and um I, I learned some things about him that I wasn't aware of when I when I found out that he passed away. Um, I didn't realize he was in Mash, for example. Oh, he's the um, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know that. I, yeah, they were like, "Oh, yeah, movie. he's in Mash," yeah. um, and of course, you know, yeah, he's just left this legacy of you know. Uh, this this incredible legacy, you know, as a Canadian actor, uh, you know, I think, uh, I don't think there'll be many actors like him. You know, I think, you know, uh, maybe Anthony Cop Hopkins comes close, um, who has that long string, that amazingly long career. Um, but I, I think he'll be very, uh, like Alan Rickman, I think he's going to be very difficult to replace. Yes, I agree. Um, you know. I agree with that. I think that, you know, as a as as a 
as a dual citizen of England and Canada. Um, I, I think, and the other thing I think a lot of people know is his son, Kiefer, of course, right? Yes, Kiefer yes. Has had a very long career as well. And so, you know, and, and he looks a lot like his father. Yeah, he really does. Oh, yes. But, can I give a shout out yeah. to Keith Sutherland in uh, The Lost Boys, if any yes. of you have seen that? Yes. The movie Lost, yeah, so, where he's in the. I love that movie. It's fantastic so, about so vampires. Don't, People don't, need to check yeah, it out. People I, haven't I, even I, heard of that movie. So you see. I, so let's look. Well, I say how can I worked with Donald Sutherland on a non-horror film when I was about fourteen years old. They filmed at the end of my street where I was growing up a movie called Nothing Personal with Suzanne Summers. And I got to play a very young activist in that film. And it was interesting because um, I, I hadn't quite, you know, gone into the foray of my, my future career of television and film, et cetera, um, on top of my archaeology, which came much later. I was doing film and yes. TV first. But um, the one thing that I always remembered about him, meeting him, is, and I met him twice. I met him once when I was very young, like I say, 14, and then again later on when I was in my late 20s. And it didn't change the way that he sort of came across. Like I said, he was a very mesmerizing person to listen to. And he had really wonderful stories. And he was very giving in terms of who he was as an actor and as a person. Mm. And he wasn't afraid to talk to the little people on the set. You know, he wasn't all about sort of this, this personality. Did you say Johnny Depp was like that too? Or you said Johnny Depp was a little more shy and reserved, reserved right. on and set? Well, certainly was never shy nor reserved. <laughs> <laughs> but let, uh -huh. let's talk about some of the things that like well, what um, what you were just saying there um donald sutherland came from very humble um, grassroots yeah he did he was born in new yeah Brunswick. there's um there's actually oh. a um an article i read on the uh the cbc news um website just about two days ago about donald sutherland uh -huh. um oh. talking about just that subject that um <clears throat> that he was born in new brunswick mm -hmm. yes but he spent a lot of his childhood actually in nova scotia he did when he was growing up yes. and this this news article on the on cbc news um came from the people that actually live in the home Oh. That Donald Sutherland grew up there okay. in Nova Scotia, and apparently they found um, like drawings from Donald when he was a child, and and no way, no card. way, and so they sent them to to Donald Sutherland, I guess through his through his agent or or Hollywood contacts or whatever, and then one day the 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 phone rang in this home and the people picked it up and on the other end of the line is this recognizable voice right that says, this is donald sutherland <gasps> and oh. he called these people to talk to them because he had received their their package of his his boyhood drawings and everything wow. and apparently they talked for several hours on the phone no and way. Donald Sutherland just talked about how he grew up in that home and what his childhood was like. That very, very down to earth individual. Very much so. And that's what I say. Like when I when wow. I was like you have to work with you know work with him, and I say work with him. I mean honestly, I wasn't a principal actor, but he kind of just made you feel like you were, even though you know you weren't on the, when you were on the set. But but. Yeah. He, very lovely and I mean I want to talk about some of these films that he's done because I think it's important uh you know it, it is in the genre of what we're doing to talk about the horror films and you know we know that he you mean in the same he, light as Bella Bella Lugosi <laughs> well and, uh, I Peter Cushion <laughs> perhaps like I, that I think that um I think well Donald was a far superior actor to Bella Lugosi so <laughs> You know, but it's a whole different 
time, right? A whole different time. But let's look at a couple of things that that um, I appreciate about him and the films that he did. And one of them, you may or may not get this reference, Rachel. So one of them, as we were talking, Ian, last time, uh, off, you know, off of our recorded segments, um, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, yep. which was a film that came out in 1965. And Donald Sutherland played Dr. Bob Carroll on the film or in the film. In and it was, it was, it wasn't really even a film. It was kind of a, you know, from what I remember, I think it was more of a, you know, pieced together idea of stories. But he was in a segment that was called Vampire. And the reason that I I'd want to talk about that is it was a cheese fest of a <laughs> of a cinematic yes, moment. I bet. But, I bet. but it, it, those are the good ones. <laughs> it, it propelled into something greater that I don't think a lot of people realize. So, do you know what SCTV is, Rachel? Have you no. ever seen SCTV? <laughs> no. Okay. Ian knows oh, what I yeah. <laughs> is this a Canadian thing? It's, right. it's, yes, Rachel. It is 100% a Canadian thing. Canadian thing. <laughs> and it started Do I need to Google it? All right. Are you going to indulge me? <laughs> let, let me introduce you to the key players of SCTV. You will know who they are. John okay. Candy. Yes. Right? He's so awesome. Levy, I love him. Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, Martin Short, uh, Phil Miani. Oh, and, wow. Uh, who else do we have there? Uh, we have... Um, and Martin Short Legends. is from right here in my hometown of Hamilton. Yes. And wow. Catherine, well, That's impressive. You know, so many. So there was all these amazing, amazing, funny people who were getting a start in their comedic and their acting careers. SCTV was the progenitor of Saturday Night Live in terms of Canadian comedy. But to me, it was always way funnier than Saturday mm -hmm. Night Live. It was just more... I think they called it second acting. stage over here and, and, in, in and America. Andrea Martin was in it as well, and Joe Flaherty, and there was just such a great combination of people that came together, sort of like the very the good old days of, of Saturday Night Live. But this is where I want to go with this, because Dr. Terror's House of Horrors was so popular to a group of upcoming comedians with SCTV that they created their own take on it. And it was called Dr. Tongue's 3D House of Horrors. And oh. Joe Flaherty was a vampire. He was the count. <laughs> and John Candy was like an Igor character. And they used to do these 3D moments, right? It was Doc coming to you. They did these film spoofs. And they would literally <laughs> the camera in and out. I and love in. it. I love and it. Out. It's great. It hilarious. These were 3D. And so this was a direct takeoff of this film. And it was a direct takeoff of, of uh, Donald Sutherland's character in this segment. So it was really, really funny. And it's a very little known fact, I think, unless you're Canadian, that you can appreciate <laughs> that Donald Sutherland's moments in Dr. Terror's House of Horrors actually created an entire skit that went on for the, the years that SCTV was on the air and actually continued that sort of, you know, fun cheesy moment of of early horror so that's my little my little segment for donald other than me working with him but um you know i always remember that and my one other favorite with donald sutherland is kate bush's video right. of cloud busting right. where donald yeah. plays oh. her dad and in it, she in plays Kate Bush's Kate oh. Bush. it's called the song is called cloud busting it's one of my favorite kate bush tunes and it's an homage to the 1940 spy flicks. And Donald plays 
the dad and she's a little 12 or 10 year old boy in the in the video and it's excellent and he's excellent as always in everything that he did but it's just such a poignant video and he plays the mm -hmm. role so well so if you have not seen cloud busting kate bush go check it out not just for donald but of course for the amazing kate bush because it's absolutely video that was done and uh you know she's she's had a wonderful resurgence in her popularity thanks to stranger things so that's my little uh, uh, yes she has because <laughs> of that song runaway horses no running up I that thing running up something that like that uh, yeah running running up the hill. <laughs> yeah yeah running up the hill. But, okay those are five moments i could talk about donald for a long time but you know the show is not uh not just here to let me talk so i want you guys to tell me what what you guys think and what maybe what's your favorite horror film or do you have something else that you like that he was in well um as i mentioned um at, at the at the the intro mm -hmm. donald sutherland is probably these days most well known for his role as president snow in the hunger games series and i'll tell you i've um, never seen it um no that's yeah, okay but it's, uh, it's uh but as i said um hunger games is what he's most known for today um uh rachel as you mentioned he's known for his early role in mash Yes, I, I didn't realize movies. he was in MASH. Is he I, I didn't movie? even know that he was in MASH. Well, not to um, say MASH the movie, not the TV show, because he's in the original Yeah, movie. the original movie. The yeah. original oh, movie. Oh, he was? Um, the original he film. also did some other war movies, um, classic films called The Dirty Dozen and Killing's yes. Heroes. But for me... When I think of Donald Sutherland in a movie, the first one that comes to mind is Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yes, exactly. Ah, yes. The 1978 yes. remake yes. of the 1950s classic. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a mm. great movie. Great movie. I actually think the remake is far better than the original. Agreed. And you've got... that. It gives me chills just thinking about it. <laughs> At the very end of the movie, Donald Sutherland has been taken over by the body snatchers, the pod people. And at the end, he yes. turns around and he goes to the woman who comes up to him, who doesn't know he's been, he's been body snatched. Mm -hmm. And there's just that classic scene of him pointing his finger. Yes. And, yeah. and this alien scream oh, yes. coming out of his mouth. It's, it's great. It's awesome. Yeah, there's some that's, there's some great moments. That's fantastic. You know, it's just he's incredible. You know, and yeah. what a um, shame. Donald Sutherland was also in one of the um, remakes of Salem's Lot. Yes, he was. He was excellent in that as the antique dealer. Oh, he was really good, and that was the one with Rob Lowe. And thus far, that is my favorite version of Salem's Lot. Because it was less cheesy than the original David Soul <laughs> version. Oh yeah, that uh, ugh, that ugh, that I just cringe when I think about that because I have seen it and it wasn't good. No, no, but but Rachel, have you seen him in in many of his horror films or any any of the like he's been in so many? The um, an American Haunting might be another one. That's a more recent one um he was in alone he's I, been in fallen he was in buffy the vampire slayer the I, I was about to mention that but that's the cheesy movie not the uh <laughs> buffy the vampire series it's the uh actual original movie um i i yeah i just i feel like he's very much up there with um uh you know uh alan rittman and I was just thinking about Harry Potter with Alan Rittman being famous for his role, you know, as, as Snape and mm -hmm. uh, I sever us there. And I, I feel like that's the same with him and uh, Donald Sutherland and, and his role uh, with the Hunger Games. 
you know, is is still highly memorize, you know, memorable for those. But I can't, other than the ones we've already mentioned, I, I can't quite think of anything else uh, oh, horror wrong. movie wise. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty. Uh, uh, Iris, there. which was another one. Um, he was in that. Don't look now. I'm just trying to think of like all the ones I can remember. Um, oh, the shuttered room, the castle of the living dead. These are like all he's done lots and lots. And, and there is one that's very often not spoken about. And oh, what's I, that? it's called Mr. Harrigan's phone. Mm -hmm. I've not heard of that. Can one. you say that again, Mr. 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 Harrigan? Mr. Yeah. Oh, so I wonder if, what that's about. If you look it up, it's a really, I saw it years ago. And it, oh, I shouldn't say years ago, because actually I think it came out during the pandemic when I think about it. Um, I think it was like fairly recent, like maybe 2021 or something, 2022. And it's one of those films that's kind of like a horror mystery. Um, but he plays a billionaire in it. And uh, he gets a he gets a he gives this kid a mobile phone, and when the mo when he dies, this kid has the mobile phone, and he has to and and he <laughs> figures out that he can actually communicate with Mister Hell oh. in the dead with the phone. Oh, a that's a good. Film. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that one's that one's fairly recent. Like I said, I I know that I think it came out somewhere during you know the pandemic. I don't know if it was 2021, 2022, but a really, really good film and one of those sort of horror suspense films where you know he comes you know, back. It reminds me of Christopher Christopher Plummer. I mean, Christopher That's Plummer worked yeah. right till the very end, very end. Christopher um, I mean, he was in Knives Out. I mean, the yeah, man was, yes, what, in his 90s? Yeah. 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 And oh, he was I mean, the main so role in Knives Out. That if was awesome. If watched some of, like, like, MASH, like the film, he's so good in it as, as Hawkeye, Pierce. And when I was growing up, I mean, that film came out, I believe it was, like, 1968 or 69, the original MASH film. And when I watched it, I was probably... I might have been 12 or 13 so it was like the mid 70s and I always you know and then I and then I saw um Alan uh why does his name just go out of my head Alan Alda Alan Alda as Hawkeye and I could never quite wrap my head around it like it was you know Donald had this this certain character about him this physicality and this you know and this look that you know Alan Alda was great but it just wasn't the same. It was a very different play on, on the character. But I think that's kind of the beauty, like you said, Rachel, of, of a good actor. It's a bit like Sir Ian McKellen, McClellan. Yes. McClellan. Yes. Um, you know, and, and people like that, like Anthony Hopkins and you know, Christopher Plummer and these people that, you know. A lot they, of them are Shakespearean trained as well, like uh, Patrick Stewart trained really really good at what they do and in the royal shakespeare company yes play a variety of characters and and like all actors starting out you know <laughs> <people, laughs> yeah <laughs> we all cringe well, the first games, um, don't we we all cringe another role that um donald sutherland did a uh, very small role mm -hmm. but it was in a movie called backdraft and what was it called backdraft Oh, backdraft. By, he by was, uh, Ron so, Howard starring Kurt Russell. He was um, kind of creepy. And it was. He played a creepy character yes. that he is this, in the movie, he plays this incarcerated, mm -hmm. almost mental patient character. Um, he's a pyro that's yeah. been incarcerated, and he's up for parole, mm -hmm. and he's in his parole meeting. And mm -hmm. they they actually approached him like in the movie in the in the mm -hmm. story of the movie because there's been all these fires and so the the fire inspector played by I believe it was Robert De Niro yeah comes in and wants to talk to Donald Sutherland's character and um, in this parole meeting and. Um, 
in the meeting, they're going, okay, well, if we let you out on parole, what are you going to do? And Donald Sutherland is like, I'm going to burn them. I'm going to burn them all. Mm -hmm. It's like classic, classic, you know, bad guy character. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, it's, you know, it's it great. Was only about, what was it, about five to eight minutes in the film, if it was that? Yeah. Yeah, very. So as I say, it was a very small role. Yeah, he maybe had five minutes of screen time. Yeah, but yeah. And that's the beauty, right? Of of a good actor, and I I think that what we tend and and again, you know, Kiefer kind of falls into the same vein as his father in terms of of his you know ability to play many different characters and and multiple across multiple genres right because come on face it he is like the the best vampire ever <laughs> oh yes i'm biased but i love that movie lost boys is just awesome <laughs> but when i watched that i i saw a lot of his father in him face yes me too yeah no, he looks so much like his father just like him yeah and I mean, and he I, has I, that stage presence just like his father. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah, he, ha he does. There's an aura. It's Donald was very tall from what I remember being. I mean, when I was 14, I was about the same height as I am now, which is five foot six. And I remember him towering above me. He was incredibly tall. Um, Kiefer's not as tall as his dad, I don't think. But Donald just had this real presence about him. And like I say, I worked with him twice. I was essentially SOC. I didn't have any lines, but I wasn't background. I, I did have a character and I did have an actual part in, in, the, in the, if the film. But it's just funny going back to, you know, as, as Canadians, <laughs> to more or less, Ian and I, um, we grew up with like Don, with, with, uh, another one was was Pinson. Gordon Pinson was another amazing actor right. from down right. east. You know, he came from Nova Scotia himself or Newfoundland. And, you know, I believe Donald Pinson came from Newfoundland, if I am correct in assuming. Or was he also out of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick? Hmm. I think it was New Brunswick. I think so, too. Yeah, I'm just going to check. Let's see where Gordy Pinson came from. Because he was another one that was just um, an amazing actor, too, and very underrated in any sort of outside of Canada. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> you know? um, he was born in Grand Falls, Windsor. He was born in Windsor. What? I thought he was from down east. <laughs> He's it. Yeah, I was going to say Grand Falls, Newfoundland. I thought he was from Newfoundland because mm -hmm. he had a very distinct accent when he when he spoke. But again, another really, really great actor. Um, I'm going to miss I'm going to miss Donald Sutherland. Thank you for watching The Ghost Show Online. Join your hosts again next week as they discuss more tales of the supernatural, the paranormal, and all things spectacular. See you soon. See you soon.